Have you ever wondered why recognised agents and pleaders play such a critical role in civil procedure? Let's dive into the world of law and decode the answer to this question. In the realm of legal proceedings, recognised agents and pleaders serve as the backbone, ensuring a smooth, efficient and fair process. They act as the middle ground, the bridge that connects the parties involved in a legal dispute with the court system. Firstly, let's define who these agents and pleaders are. Recognised agents are individuals who have been authorised, either through a power of attorney or due to their trade or business involvement, to act on behalf of a party within the court. These actions may include appearances, applications or any other act required by law. Pleaders, on the other hand, are appointed representatives who act for a person in court, authorised by a written document signed by the person themselves, their recognised agent, or someone else with power of attorney. Their importance is underscored by their roles. They facilitate communication between the court and the parties involved, simplifying the legal jargon and procedures that may be overwhelming to the common individual. They ensure that the legal rights of the parties they represent are upheld and that their interests are adequately protected. Furthermore, they bring efficiency to the court proceedings. By acting on behalf of the parties, they help reduce the court's workload, streamline the process and speed up the resolution of disputes. They also serve to make the legal process more accessible to people who may not have the knowledge or ability to navigate the system on their own. Lastly, the role of recognised agents and pleaders is pivotal in ensuring the fair administration of justice. They contribute to the balance of power in the court system, ensuring that each party, regardless of their background or resources, has a fair shot at presenting their case. Understanding the rules governing these agents and pleaders, specifically Order 3 of the Code of Civil Procedure, can help us appreciate their significance in the legal process. So, let's delve deeper into these rules in the upcoming scenes. Let's delve into the first rule of Order 3. Rule 1 focuses on appearances, applications and acts in the court of law. It is the cornerstone of Order 3, establishing who can represent a party in court. Now, this rule is all about flexibility. It states that any appearance, application or act in court can be made by the party themselves, a recognised agent or a pleader acting on their behalf. So, let's break that down a bit. Firstly, a party can represent themselves in court. This is known as pro se or pro per representation and it's an option for those who prefer to handle their legal matters personally. However, the law understands that not everyone has the time, knowledge or confidence to navigate the intricacies of the legal system. That's where recognised agents and pleaders come in. A recognised agent is a person authorised by the party to act on their behalf. This could be someone holding a power of attorney or a person conducting business for a party who is not local to the court's jurisdiction. The key here is that the agent has the party's express permission to represent them. Then we have pleaders. These are professionals, like lawyers, who are appointed to appear, apply or act on behalf of the party in court. They offer their expertise and experience to navigate the legal process effectively and efficiently. All these options provide flexibility and choice to parties involved in a legal proceeding. They can choose to represent themselves, or if they're not comfortable or able, they can have a recognised agent or a pleader to do so. This flexibility is crucial. It ensures that everyone, regardless of their legal knowledge or personal circumstances, can have their day in court. It ensures that legal proceedings are not just accessible to the elite few, but to everyone. Rule 1 sets the stage for the roles of recognised agents and pleaders in the legal process. It is the gateway to understanding the rest of Order 3 of the Code of Civil Procedure, and its importance cannot be overstated. Moving on to Rule 2, let's explore who can be recognised as an agent. Rule 2 of Order 3 of the Code of Civil Procedure, or the CPC, identifies two specific categories of individuals who can be recognised as agents on behalf of parties involved in a court case. The first category includes persons holding powers of attorney. These individuals are authorised to make appearances, applications and acts on behalf of the parties they represent. This means they have a legal mandate granted through a power of attorney document to act and make decisions on behalf of the party in the court proceedings. The second category is a bit more specific. 
It includes persons who are carrying on trade or business for and in the names of parties who are not resident within the local limits of the jurisdiction of the court. This only applies, however, in matters connected with such trade or business. It's important to note that this category is relevant only where no other agent is expressly authorized to make and do such appearances, applications and acts. In essence, Rule 2 is about who has the legal authority to represent a party in court. It could be someone holding a power of attorney or it could be someone who is running a business on behalf of a non-resident party. But remember, the latter is only applicable when no other agent has been expressly authorized for the task. These stipulations ensure that the legal proceedings are carried out with utmost integrity and that the rights and interests of all parties involved are adequately represented and protected. It's about making sure that whoever is acting on behalf of a party has the legal authority to do so and that there are no conflicts of interest that could potentially compromise the fairness of the proceedings. So, Rule 2 is crucial because it sets clear boundaries and guidelines on who can act as a recognised agent in court proceedings, thereby maintaining the sanctity of the legal process. As we can see, Rule 2 clearly outlines who can act as a recognised agent. Rule 3 delves into the service of process on recognised agents. This rule is a testament to the efficiency and practicality of the Code of Civil Procedure. Let's break it down. The service of process is a fundamental concept in law. It's the act of legally notifying someone of a pending lawsuit or proceeding involving them. This can include any document that is part of the court proceedings, such as a summons or a complaint. Now imagine if you're not available to receive these documents personally. You're out of town, on an important business trip, or perhaps you're just not within the jurisdiction of the court. Would the whole legal process come to a halt? Absolutely not. Enter Rule 3. This rule states that the process served on the recognised agent of a party shall be as effectual as if the same had been served on the party in person. In simpler terms, if you have a recognised agent, they can receive the process on your behalf and it will be just as effective as if you received it yourself. This rule brings a high degree of efficiency to the legal process. It means that the wheels of justice can keep turning, even if one of the parties is not physically present. It also means that individuals can continue their daily lives, business operations or essential travels without worrying about missing important legal documents. Of course, there's a caveat. The rule applies unless the court directs otherwise. This means that in some cases the court may require the party themselves to receive the process. The circumstances under which this might happen can vary. It could be due to the nature of the case, the importance of the document or other legal considerations. But in general, Rule 3 offers a practical solution to a potential logistical challenge. It ensures that the legal process can continue smoothly and efficiently even in the face of obstacles. Rule 3 ensures that the legal process remains unimpeded, even if the party is not physically present. And that, my friends, is the power and beauty of the Code of Civil Procedure. Finally, Rule 4 addresses the appointment of pleaders. This rule is all about formalities and ensuring that there's clarity and legitimacy in the representation process. So, let's delve into it. Rule 4 states, in no uncertain terms, that no pleader can act for any person in a court of law unless he has been appointed for the purpose by such person. Now you might wonder, how is this appointment made? Well, the rule specifies that the appointment must be made by a document in writing. This document must be signed by the person who is appointing the pleader. But the rule doesn't stop there. It recognises that the person may not always be able to make the appointment themselves. In such cases, the rule allows for the appointment to be made by the person's recognised agent. This extends the ability to appoint a pleader to a wider range of individuals associated with the person. But what if the person or their recognised agent isn't available? Are there any other alternatives for appointing a pleader? The rule has got that covered too. It allows for the appointment to be made by some other person who has been duly authorised by or under a power of attorney to make such appointment. So, what does all this mean? It means that the process of appointing a pleader has been designed to be flexible, yet secure. It ensures that the person has control over who represents them in court, either directly or indirectly through a recognised agent, 
or a person authorised under a power of attorney, but it also ensures that there's a formal, written record of the appointment, providing clarity and avoiding any potential disputes or misunderstandings about who has been appointed to act as the pleader. With Rule 4, the Code ensures that a pleader's appointment is formal, clear and unequivocal. This rule is key in underlining the importance of clear communication and documentation in the legal process, emphasising the need for transparency and accountability in legal representation. To recap, Order 3 of the CPC lays the groundwork for the roles of recognised agents and pleaders in civil procedures. It establishes the ways in which appearances, applications and acts can be made or done in court, either by the party in person, their recognised agent, or a pleader acting on their behalf. It further defines who can serve as recognised agents, typically those holding power of attorney or conducting business for non-resident parties. The order also clarifies that any process served on a recognised agent is as effectual as if served on the party directly, barring any specific court directions. Lastly, Order 3 sets forth the protocol for the appointment of pleaders, requiring a written document signed by the party, their recognised agent, or another duly authorised individual. Remember, understanding these rules can provide valuable insights into the workings of the legal process.